So this is a teardown of a Juniper Networks EX2200-24P-4G switch. This is a 24 port QE switch with four SFP ports. Unfortunately, the PoE functionality of this switch is dead, so it's not worth saving. Um, I have taken the liberty of removing most of the screws already, since there's a lot of screws in this unit. I'm going to remove the power supply screws while I'm at it. And with these PoE switches, there is a beefier power supply involved, along with some different support infrastructure for the PoE power. The 24T variation of this switch won't have this riser board, and I don't believe they bother with installing the pin headers either. There we go. And with these EX2200 series switches, the power supplies are internal, but they are made to be easily re replaced. Although, <laughs> might not be able to get that connector out. Oh, there's another screw holding that in. Based on the part number on the power supply, or model number as you said it is, this appears to be a 550 watt power supply. There we go. And due to the increased amount of power generated by these power supplies, if I can get it out here, they do have their own fan for additional cooling on top of the internal fans that come with the switch. And yeah, so there's the power supply. Just the model information off the power supply. It should be, maybe not. Let's see if I can get that in focus. There we go. Switch bits to a more appropriate size, real quick. And this riser, or well, I guess, I don't know, this daughter board, I guess, would have additional components on it if it were the 48 port PoE model. So there's some power regulation on this board. And looks like a little bit of control circuitry as well. Basically, this half of the board is not populated since it's only a 24 port PoE switch. I'm not sure what caused the PoE to fail in this one. This stuff's always a mystery. Usually there's no obvious charring or anything on the boards. So like, that pad there looks kind of gross, but I think that's just flex residue. Because that one's clean. So that's that. And then from here, it's just your standard 
switch circuit board. And all the tools to remove those brass standoffs at this time. It is nice that they used standard three pin headers for these fans. So if you really wanted to, you could replace these fans with something quieter. I'm not really sure what you would gain from that considering most of the time you're not going to have the switch in the same area as you, but you never know. I have two of these running in my rack right now, plus a uh, EX3300, and they are contributing the majority of the noise, at least when the servers aren't under load. But yeah, just your standard three pin fan. And this is the part where people might cry. <laughs> Um, these heat sinks, I don't know why, it's really annoying from a uh, recycling standpoint, but Juniper uses a thermally conductive adhesive and stainless steel pins to mount these to the board. So here's those pins. Sometimes they'll pull through the board and sometimes they just snap off, but I'm not sure what the reasoning of using combination of the adhesive and the pins was. But, yeah, so let's see if I can snap one of these off that pull the chip. I found that for some annoying reason the adhesive is strong enough to pull the chips off within the heat sink sometimes. Probably because I'm using more aggressive methods when I'm scrapping these normally, but um, yeah, even then they like to pull pull the heat sinks with them. And I didn't realize I assumed I was doing that. My bad. <laughs> um, gosh, I do need a better way to film this so I can see what's shown on the screen. Maybe you can zoom in a little more. There we go. So there's the main processor and then some Nanya memory. Also has a um, Samsung flash storage chip. I guess I can flip that the right way. There we go. And then there's probably a USB controller and a network and a serial controller in this corner here too, since that's where the console and management ports and stuff are. One of these days I'll figure out how to zoom properly. There we go. So that's probably the serial chip. And then one of these two would be networking or uh, USB controllers. Camera doesn't want to focus though. I might be switching phones here soon too. Go to an iPhone, we'll see. <laughs> Depends. I really don't like Apple, but if it means better video quality, and those are the um, controller chips for the ports. There's six of them, so that must mean they handle four ports per chip. I don't think I can get that much cleaner. I will pause and grab some rubbing alcohol. Alright. See if we can get that a little cleaner. Thermal adhesive, I probably would have to use something a little more aggressive like my kerosene. Looks like 88E12400 LKJ2. I don't recognize that um, logo, so I don't know who made these. Usually in the Cisco stuff, it seems like you see uh, Broadcom chips, but yeah. Um, one other thing to point out is these uh, chassis for the Juniper equipment generally tend, tend to be somewhat modular. So, in theory, let's say maybe you have a 48-port um, switch with bad cosmetics and you have a dead 24-port switch of the same series. What you'd have to do 
Let's see what I can do without cutting my fingers. There we go. Because you just have to pry that blank out and then you could uh, swap boards and stuff. I actually had to do something similar to that with one of the switches because the power supply it came with was cosmetically damaged. It was, somebody must have yanked the cord and bent the uh, plug. So I had to switch power supplies between two different switches. But you know, overall, kind of a nicely designed switch. They uh, definitely get the job done still for gigabit purposes. But hopefully that was interesting. Thanks for watching.